hello surgical utopians i hope you guys are doing well and you must have watched the previous video which was on single tooth osteotomy today we will be talking about segmental osteotomy which can be further divided into the anterior segmental osteotomy or the posterior segmental osteotomy our first topic is on the anterior segmental osteotomy which is indicated in cases where there is premaxillary protrusion deep bite or anterior open bite anterior segmental osteotomy can be done with uh, different techniques few of them are like con stock technique Wasmund's technique, Wunderer's technique, Kapar technique, Epker and Walford technique. So we will discuss about the Wasmund's technique. In this, a vertical incision is made in the premolar region and a small midline vertical incision is made to expose the anterior nasal spine and the nasal septum. The premolars are extracted on either the sides and after which the osteotomy cuts are made. This cut is made first in the socket of the extracted premolar tooth after which the cuts are directed medially towards the piriform aperture taking care not to rupture the nasal mucosa. Then the palatal cortical plate of the extracted premolar socket is cut vertically and is continued on the palatal bone by tunneling under the palatal mucoperiosteum. The nasal septum is attached to the nasal aspect of the heart palate and this needs to be detached for the mobilization of the palate. So the nasal septum is freed from the palate using a nasal septal chisel from an anterior direction through a midline vertical buccal incision. In case where there is need for the superior repositioning of the maxillary segment, length of the nasal septum is reduced using a ronger. After the segment is freed and mobilized completely it can be repositioned as in a desired position and fixed using orthodontic wires or with the help of arch bar the mucoperiosteal flap is then simply closed with simple interrupted suture the wounders method which was given in 1963 is similar to the vasmans method except that the palate is exposed by a transverse palatal incision with the margins away from the osteotomy site the rest all the procedures are similar to the vasmans procedure the complications of anterior maxillary segmental osteotomy will include loss of vitality of the dentition or tooth then there may be damage to the tooth roots persistent periodontal defects may be present osseous necrosis of the dento osseous segments may occur communication with the maxillary sinus and nasal cavity may be formed hemorrhage oronasal and oroantral fistula formation unfavorable nasolabial aesthetics including shortening and thinning of the upper lip or widening of the alar bases and upturning of the nasal tip Nasal septal deviation may also occur. Then heading towards posterior segmental osteotomy. Initially, Shodat in 1959 described it as a two-stage procedure, but now it is done as a single-stage procedure. And Perko gave a bell technique for posterior segmental osteotomy in 1967. Posterior segmental osteotomy is done in the cases such as where there is posterior maxillary hyperplasia where there is total maxillary hyperplasia in cases where distal repositioning of the posterior maxillary alveolar fragment is needed in order to provide space for proper eruption of impacted canine or bicuspid tooth that is the premolar tooth in cases where there is spacing in the dentition and this spacing can be closed by the repositioning of the posterior segment it can also be done in cases where there is presence of transverse excess or transverse deficiency in cases of posterior open bite and posterior cross bite so coming to the surgical technique of posterior segmental osteotomy this a horizontal incision is made in the buccal sulcus from the canine region to the first molar region after which the premolar tooth may need to be extracted in order to provide space for the anterior osteotomy cut. A vertical bone cut is made through the socket of the extracted tooth. After the vertical bone cut, a horizontal bone cut is made from the extracted premolar tooth anteriorly extending up till the tuberosity region 
posteriorly and this horizontal cut is approximately 5 mm above the root apices in order to prevent any damage to the roots of the tooth. After the horizontal bone cut is made, the bone may be removed in order to reposition the segment superiorly and a curved osteotome is inserted from the buccal gap that is created and the posterior segment is separated. While doing this procedure, a care should be taken not to damage the greater palatine vessel. In order to completely mobilize the posterior segment, at times incision may be required on the palatal side as well. And this incision is placed medial to the greater palatine vessels and parallel to it. The medial wall of the antrum or the lateral wall of the nose is sectioned using the osteotome or burr. The segment is completely mobilized and the bone is reduced wherever there is a necessity for it. Following which, the segment is repositioned in a pre-planned desired position and fixed there using arch bar and a splint. And finally, the flaps are sutured using simple interrupted suture. Complications of segmental osteotomy will include the, the damage to the soft tissue which leads to interferences of blood supply and devitalization of the segment eventually. There may be damage to the adjacent teeth, periodontal pockets may be formed and oroantral communication may be formed. And in cases where bone contact is not sufficient or not satisfactory, there may be delayed union of the osteomatized segment. Another thing worth mentioning over here is that combination of anterior and posterior maxillary osteotomy can also be done which is called as horseshoe osteotomy or portal subapical maxillary osteotomy. It was described by Paul in 1969 for mid-face hypoplasia cases. So in this case, a combined form of anterior and posterior subapical osteotomy is done. And this procedure creates a three-piece maxilla with central nasal portion left undisturbed through the use of palatal parasagittal osteotomies. So this was all about the segmental osteotomy of maxilla. I hope you guys liked the video. Stay tuned to Surgical Utopia for the Lefort osteotomy in the upcoming video. And it's a wrap for now. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye and take care.